Good morning. Happy Easter, everyone. Welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to First Parish Federated Church, to our friends from Second Christian Church, all our friends near and far. We're so glad that you have joined us for this worship service. Thank you to our tech team, our deacons, and again, Chris. We're so glad you're here. Um, announcements? Yes, uh, there will be a coffee a virtual coffee hour for Second Christian, um, will be, and that link will be posted in the comments feed toward the end of today's worship service. But not for First Parish, because at 1130, we are having a short outdoor service uh, to celebrate Easter. And as you can see, there are many flowers here, as is typical for our Easter Sunday mornings. And uh, typically, you would take them home with you following worship, but we are... Um, Nothing's typical. We, nothing <laughs> is typical right now, but we would like to find good homes for all of these plants following worship today. So uh, folks from Second Christian, if you want to come by First Parish here uh, after worship, after coffee hour, uh, we will have some plants out front. And if you can't come up here and would like one, please let us know and we will make sure one gets to you he while will, supplies last. He will make sure <laughs> one gets to you. Yeah. We. It's a we. It's a we. All right. Let us worship God. If you are able to print out a bulletin, we invite you to read responsibly our call to worship. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. May our alleluias rise to the heavens. May our joy spill over into a thirsting world. New life is ours. The, this day and always. With heart and soul and mind and strength, we gather to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God. Our first hymn is Christ the Lord is Risen Today. Coming right in. Coming right in. <laughs>
nice to have Chris on trumpet. Thank you, it Chris. Is. Let us pray together our gathering prayer followed by the Lord's Prayer. As we gather together across the miles, as we celebrate this glorious day, move among us and connect us, O God. We rejoice today because the tomb is empty. Separation does not have the last word. Death does not have the last word. Because he lives, we too so help us to proclaim this good news, not just with our words, but with our whole lives. Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We pray these and all things in Jesus' name, who taught us when we pray to be bold and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And our song is Halle, Halle, Hallelujah.
Our first scripture lesson this morning is taken from Psalm 118. Let us listen for the word of God. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has done valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our second scripture is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. This is Mark's version of the Easter story. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and they fled from the tomb. For terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. May God bless our hearing and reading and understanding of God's word this morning. So the sermon title is Adventures Out There, 10 points to the first person who can tell me where that title comes from. You can just answer in Facebook feed and Brad will give you the awarded points and somehow there will be a prize. Back in the 90s there were a series of children's books that allowed the reader, the kids, to choose their own ending. Anyone remember those? The story would take you just so far then it would stop and ask you which way you wanted to go. They were called Choose Your Own Adventure Books, and they were very popular because the reader, and I'm quoting now, the reader gets to actively participate in the story and determine the course the book will follow. Our scripture reading this morning is a little like those Choose Your Own Adventure Books. It just stops, kind of suddenly, with the women fleeing from the tomb, being both amazed and terrified, and then saying nothing to anyone because they were so afraid. The story just kind of stops. In the other Gospels, we get a little more. For example, in the Gospel of John, Mary actually runs into Jesus in the tomb. And after mistaking him for the gardener, they had this wonderful homecoming of sorts. 
And he tell her, tells her to go and tell the others, tell them that I am ascending to my God. And she does. She runs to tell the disciples, I have seen the Lord. In Matthew's gospel, an angel meets the women at the tomb, rolls away the stone for them, and then tells them, Jesus isn't here. He is raised, raised from the dead. Go quickly and tell the others. So they run from the tomb, and then they run smack into Jesus. Greetings, he says, as if it's just an ordinary day. They try to hold on to him. They're so glad to see him. And he says, go and tell my brothers. Off they go to tell them the good news. He is risen. Even in Luke, while the women are terrified at seeing the two men who are in the tomb, angels maybe, after he tells them the good news that he is risen, they run off and they tell the disciples. Peter doesn't believe them because that's Peter. He heads back to check the tomb for himself, sees that it is empty, and he is amazed. The other Gospels give us much more to this story. People are told the good news is shared. There is terror. There is amazement. There is joy. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. In Mark's gospel, it's like those old choose your adventure books. We get to choose what happens next. Like, will we share the good news? Will we tell others around us that Jesus is risen? The tomb is empty. And that means something. It means something to us all. There is new life for him, for you, for all of us. Because he is risen, we can rise too. Or will we take the information we just heard and do nothing? Because that's an option too. Maybe we choose to do nothing because we're afraid, like the women were. We don't know what this resurrection stuff really means. Or maybe we do. Jesus Christ is still alive, and that means we have to keep following him. And that can be scary. It was scary for the woman at that time, Jesus just having been crucified. And it can be scary for us, too. Not everyone wants to hear the good news of Jesus Christ that tells us we get to love the least of these among us. We get to work to bring God's kingdom of peace and justice all around us. Try talking to family or friends about racial, racial justice or advocating for gun control. It's not that easy. It can be pretty scary. Or maybe we're tired. And really, after all that we've been through this past year, who isn't? I know I am. Maybe we just need to rest. We have choices. Of course, before you choose, it helps to know what exactly you are choosing. I said just a moment ago that Jesus rising from the dead means something. There is new life for him and for us. Because he has risen, we rise too. And I have often made people in church sing on Easter Sunday morning this song to help illustrate that point. Perhaps you've heard it at church camp or maybe you've heard it at vacation Bible school. Be rise and shine and give God your glory, glory. There are hand signals. So if you know them, I invite you to use them because I believe everything is better with hand signals. So you rise and shine and give God your glory, glory. Come on, Brad, rise and shine and give God your glory, glory. Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, children of the Lord. And I make people sing that because I think that's what Easter is about. It is about rising and shining. 
It's time to take all that good stuff that we have inside of us, all that stuff that Jesus has given us, all that he has taught us to rise and to shine. But now I think there is a better song to help explain what has happened, what's going on here, what Jesus' resurrection means to you and to me. It's a lullaby, actually, and it's called The Great Storm is Over. It's written by Bob Frank, and it's sung by John McCutcheon. That's actually my favorite version, and I'm going to try to sing it for you. Hush, little baby, a story I will tell of a love that has vanquished the powers of hell. Sweetness in the air and justice on the wind. Laughter in the house where the mourners had been. Alleluia, the great storm is over. Lift up your wings and fly. The deaf shall have music, the blind have new eyes. The standards of death taken down by surprise. Release for the captives, an end to the war. Streams in the desert, new hope for the poor. Alleluia, the great storm is over. Lift up your wings and fly. Hush, little baby, let go of your fears. The Lord loves his own and your mother is near. The babe fell asleep as the lantern did burn. The mother sang on until her bridegroom's return. Alleluia, the great storm is over. Lift up your wings and fly. Alleluia, the great storm is over. Lift up your wings and fly. And that, I think, is Easter. Jesus Christ is risen. There is new life for him and for us. And because he is risen, we can rise too. Death has been defeated. Love has triumphed over evil. It will always triumph over evil, even if it takes a little time. The great storm is over, so lift up your feet, your wings, and fly. Let go of your fears. You don't have to be afraid anymore. Mark's story has ended. It has come to a stop. And now you get to actively participate in it and determine the course, the book, your life takes. It's time to lift up your wings and fly. And if you are ready to do that right now, then how great is that? Go get them. And if you need to rest a little, that's okay too before then. And if you're a little afraid, well, that's okay as well. Rising and shining, lifting up your wings and flying is not easy. It often turns out that before resurrection, before you embrace new life, there is often fear. Look at the women in the Bible story this morning and the disciples too turns out that men are often as afraid as women and if you look back at your own life and the experiences that you have had as you've let go of the old and embraced new life i bet you'll find that there was some fear first but oh the feeling afterwards amazement and joy, new life. Adventure is out there. The great storm is over. Lift up your wings and fly. Happy Easter, everyone. Amen.
As we come before God in prayer this morning, we invite you as always to name persons and situations that should be in our prayers this week, and we will do our very best to include them in our prayers this morning. Let us come before God in prayer. On this bright and beautiful morning, O God, one year and counting into this ordeal, this time of exile, of separation, even still, even today, we praise you, O God of love and life and new life. With glad shouts of alleluia and amen, we praise you for the relentless power of your unending love. A love revealed to us and all in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth. In him you expose the failure of hatred and violence and murder. In him you have broken the grip of death. In him you have given to us the gift of new and everlasting life. And so we bring our whole selves to you in praise forever. Living God, hear our prayer. Make of this world a new creation. Give us the courage and determination to be builders of your righteous kingdom here on this earth. Reveal in us and through us again and again and again every day the love that never ends. Let there be joy in Jerusalem and peace and justice among the nations, in Gaza and Palestine, in Lebanon and Yemen, in Afghanistan and Myanmar. May rivers of justice and righteousness flow through our cities and towns. In Atlanta and Orange, California, in Virginia Beach and Minneapolis, in Washington, D.C., and here in South Berwick and Kittery in Elliott and York and Portsmouth, and wherever we are gathered, near and far, let the sounds of weeping and cries of distress transform to shouts of joy and laughter. Let infants grow and thrive. Let trans people and Asian Americans live free from fear and persecution. Let the old dance like children and children live to be old. Bring all your hurting people healing and wholeness. Hear us now as we speak the names of those who are in need of your never-ending love and your healing, life-sustaining presence. We pray today especially for Grace and Mike, for 
Willard or Molly and Lisa and Meredith, Bob, Mary, Michelle. We pray for courage for those living in fear. Pray for Annie and Brian, all those who are in transition in their lives. Let every person find a home safe and secure from violence and enjoy the fruit of her labor. Let the wolf and the lamb live together in peace. Let no one hurt, or destroy one another. Show us the holy mountain that you have prepared. Show us how to be co-creators of the new heaven and the new earth that you have promised so that we might be glad and rejoice in your presence forever. Hear now the prayers we hold in our hearts and lift up to you. Even as we pray for ourselves. Almighty God, for we lift them up to you in the name of Jesus, our risen Savior. Amen. We invite you to a time of great offering, to offer who you are to God and to God's people this week. And if you are able, we so greatly appreciate your gifts to ministries. And there are many ministries, but your churches especially, um, we are able to come to you and to be active in our communities because of your gifts. So we invite you now to make your gift to one of our churches, to an organization that's important to you, and again, to think about how you will offer yourself with your unique gifts to God this week.
Amen. We're going to sing. Amen. dedicate our gifts. There are many blessings, even in the midst of what we're going through, O oh God. Accept all the gifts we bring to our families and neighbors and communities. Help us to follow you faithfully and bless us all with your saving grace and healing love. We pray these and all things in Jesus' name. Amen. We invite you now to join us at the table. And if you haven't set your table yet, there's still time to just grab a piece of bread or a cracker. loaf or a cracker or a hot cross bun and join us at the table. For communion this morning, we invite you to lend Christ your table. As the woman in the upper room lent him the Passover table, and two friends from Emmaus welcomed him to their table, one they thought was a stranger. Lend Christ your table, your bread, your cup, and your open to strangers heart. We come from heartfelt hosannas in a long season of feeling like withered fig trees. We come from an alabaster jar, abundance of love and hard questions. We recognize experiences of betrayal, denial, and the feeling that everyone we love has fallen asleep and left us alone. So we recognize this holy story. We remember that Jesus washed feet and offered a covenant of himself broken and poured out for a small group of followers long ago and for us in our time. He was risen on Easter, though even in the joy of resurrection, he kept blessing and teaching, accepting hospitality and giving us hope to eat. Let us pray. Gatherer of the distance, companion through pandemic, we confess that even on this most holy day, we are unable to believe that death is not the last word. We confess our utter dependence on you, not only for life, but also for faith, hope, and love. Without your astonishing appearance, to our ancestors and your stunning presence through the ages, we would be lost. Forgive us and transform us that in every way our work and prayer will make whole what is broken and give peace on earth. So reconciled, we pray together. Host, Host of, of salvation, salvation and, and visitor to, to our lives. lives. Send your transforming power upon this bread and your freely given love upon this cup. Risen Christ, live in us that we may live in you. Amen. The bread on your table is blessed and broken. A meal of grace. Sharing love, we will never be hungry.
on your table is blessed and shared like the overflowing of tears and joy. Drinking deeply, we will never thirst. In thanksgiving for this meal of grace and in the holy dispersion of virtual worship, we claim the risen Christ's love found on every table. Let us pray. O Holy, holy One, one we, we come, come to you with lilies and tears, with personal alleluias, we whisper that soar like the greatest choir. We claim the resurrection for those who love, who are tenderly sheltered in your arms, and name the resurrection as your invitation to all the weary, all those who need hope. May our lives become your table in all the world. Amen. And our closing song is In the Garden.
now may the God who shakes heaven and earth, the God whom death could not contain, the God who lives to disturb and heal us, bless us with power to go forth into the world to proclaim the good news. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Happy Easter, everyone. We'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.